Okay, I'm going to show you the final project. So this is our one point perspective. What does perspective mean in general? Okay, so like kind of like the angle of things a lot of times how you're seeing it. This means we have one point. So it means we have one vanishing point. We have one vanishing point right here where it looks like my whole city is getting farther away. Okay, this is what it means to draw in one point perspective. It means that we have one vanishing point and everything is getting smaller towards the vanishing point. Does that make sense? Okay, you have seen one point perspective a lot. I think maybe you guys did it or I've seen it done a bunch of ways where it's like in a hallway and you see like the ceiling is going farther away, the walls, all the floor, all that stuff is going farther away. So we're gonna do a one point perspective city. So like I said, because we have such a short time frame, I am totally fine if you want to do this on your final piece of paper. Unless you're one of those people that you're like, I did not want mine to look like the demonstration piece or like everybody else's, then you could do it on a scrap piece of paper. But either way, you need to do the step by step with us as we go. Okay? Ready to go. All right. You need your ruler. And I want us to find the exact middle of the paper. How should we find the exact middle of our paper? Huh? Yeah, we're going to use our ruler. Measure. Here's what I'm going to have you do. Just about halfway through the paper where I think is the middle, I'm going to take my ruler. Now, I'm going to do this on a sheet of computer paper. The final paper is 9 by 12. Okay, my sheet of computer paper is 8.5 by 11. So our, our like measurements might be a little different depending on what size of paper you're using. But like my, let's, let's talk ruler 101 fast. We've already talked ruler 101, so this should be a this should be a review. Look up at the screen really fast. Here's my four inch, four by the long line. Here's my five inch, five by the long line. Okay, what side is my sixteenth and what side is my eighth? Which of the sides is sixteenth? Top or bottom? Top is sixteenth, which means it has sixteen sections versus eight sections. I'm actually going to flip this over so I have less sections. Okay, keep looking, keep looking at my screen. All right, you break down this inch part, the longest line in between is what? Half, half inch. And then you break up that half inch part, the longest line in between those two spots is? A fourth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, okay? Here's the thing, this is an eighth of an inch, this is technically two eighths. If you think of fractions, what does two eighths look like right down to? One fourth, okay? So that's why you could read eight sections in between this inch. Okay, we got that concept. Because you're going to have to use, for this part, you're probably going to have to use quarters and halves and all that jazz. So I am at eight and a half, so I'm going to make a mark at four and a quarter on my page. Just something like this, something that I can erase if I need to. If you're using the nine by twelve, what's nine divided by two? You have to do your own math. So if you're using the final sheet of paper, the size of it is nine by twelve. What is 9 divided by 2? 4 and a half. 9 divided by 2 is 4 and a half. Okay. Once we have that done, we're going to go to the center of our paper. I'm going to literally line my ruler up with that pencil line that I made before because I know that that's the halfway point side to side. Now my computer paper is 11 inches tall. How long is the final paper? How long is your final paper if you're using that? What's that? It's 12 inches tall. So what's 12 divided by two? Six. Six. I'm on 11, so I'm gonna go five and a half. Okay. And then this is going to be the center of my paper. And I'm gonna give myself kind of like a little dot. Remember, because our paper sizes are different, we might have a different, you want to make sure you're different. It's all random, but it's funny. Well, your middle has to be at, oh, you're at four and a half. So that's your middle. That looks like, I'm going to make the other one. Okay, here's the nice part about sitting by people, is if, you're confused, there's probably someone that's smart around you. If you're both confused, that's where probably other people aren't getting it. Please ask your question. If you are like, I got this, try to help other people, okay? 
What we are going to do is we're going to look at kind of that point in the bottom part of the paper. Okay, this is where it doesn't matter if our sizes of our paper are different. I am going to line my ruler up. We're going to make our road, by the way, with the vanishing point and the corner of my paper, and I'm going to connect those two. Okay, so I have my vanishing point in the corner of my paper, and I'm going to connect those two. But that way, it looks like. This doesn't look like the middle of my paper. We won't take a look. That's because I get a whole lot more going on. Yeah, just make sure they're straight. Okay, now we're going to do that same thing on the opposite side. Vanishing point, the corner of the paper. Okay, so this is, it's hard to visualize right now, but this is like our road. It's going to be getting skinnier, smaller as it goes farther away. What do you need, what do we need to do to be able to understand this more? What would help us understand that this is a road? The lines in the middle. The lines in the middle. Okay, so we're going to get there. We're going to make a sidewalk first, and then we'll do the lines in the middle. What I want you to do, and this is where yours can differ from mine a little bit if you want, but I am going to have you put a sidewalk. Sidewalks are a good buffer. Like if you were going down like our little downtown strip, okay, the businesses don't end on the road, right? Like there's parking and there's a sidewalk. You need like at least that sidewalk space to be a buffer so it doesn't look like totally weird. I'm going to go in like right at an inch from each corner. I'm going to make a little mark. So I have two marks at the bottom, both an inch in from the corner. Okay, so we're an inch in from our vanishing point. We're going to connect those new lines. Okay, from our vanishing point, we're going to connect to those new lines. This is going to be our sidewalk space. Do you, do you ever for study hall or something? Yeah. We'll plot off lots of areas. So what room are you in? They had a girls have a basketball game. Regan, are you sure that they went to Mrs. Martin's room? Is that where you did you tell her you were there? Yeah. She just wants you to she just wants to know that you're here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, are we there yet? Just now maybe. I was just letting you know that I have Reagan. Okay, thanks, bye. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we wanna find actually the very center. Before we do more details on our, we're gonna do details on our road first and then details on our sidewalk second, okay? I want you to find the center of the paper again along the bottom edge and just put a little dash there at the very bottom, okay? Okay, so I want you to put your pencils down. Just watch me for a minute. All right. Now, typically, if you were in like a road, like in peril, right, you're probably not going to have a dash line to separate your two lanes because the dash line represents what? Like a passing lane. Okay. We're just going to do that. You could do a solid line. 
but I'm going to show you how to do like a dashing line. The concept is, what happens to things as they get farther away? They should get smaller. They should get smaller, okay? So I'm going to line up my vanishing line with my little dash that I made, and I am going to make a series of dash lines that get smaller, and the lines probably are going to get a little closer together as they go farther away. Why don't you do that then? Okay, dash lines that get sm smaller and also a little closer together maybe as they get farther away. Get closer. Like your lines as they get towards that advancing point, they get a little closer together. Go back into that pottery section. There's some in a tub on that part back there. Okay, now these look these look okay, but they should also get a little more narrow, right? Like we know something like this has some thickness to it. So this is how I'm gonna do that. And I want you to watch this because it's pretty simple. I just want you to kind of make a T at the top and then pull that line down and give this first line some like thickness, okay? And then you're gonna like take your pencil and like add value, color that whole thing in. But you wanna be pretty direct with it, get good edges. Use your ruler if you need to. Okay, so things actually get, pop quiz, things get lighter or darker as they go farther away. If we're looking like in a landscape, we're looking far away. Do things get lighter as they get farther away or darker? Things get lighter as they go farther away. So it's totally okay and it's actually a good thing if these front few are a little darker. Okay, so on this second one, I'm going to do the same thing, just a little bit less thickness to it. Just going to, almost like I bold a letter on the computer, I'm going to try to like bold this one. I'm going to do that a little bit more with the third line, maybe just kind of go over it, maybe go over my fourth line one time, and the goal is that these look like they're getting slightly lighter as they go farther away, and you can see that on my example, is that I've just put enough pencil on it that it looks like it's getting a little lighter as it goes farther away. If you're working on your final copy, this is something that you probably want to, like, later take some time and, like, make sure this is done really, really right. All right, how long do you guys think one of these dashes are in real life, like out on the highway? They're actually, what's that? They're actually like, it's somewhere in the six to eight foot range. They're, they're longer than six foot. Yeah, it's not weird, they look like they're like a foot when you're driving past it, okay? I really did not believe it when I when someone told me. So I looked it up on the DOT website, and then I still didn't believe it. So I went and like laid beside one on a really like road that was secluded. Yeah, and I'm six foot tall, and it was like another foot or two taller than me. I don't remember exactly the exact foot. They're really, they're actually really long. Isn't that weird? Okay. All right, well, we're going to move on from the road thing. You can go back to that if you need to later. Okay, we're going to learn how to make sidewalks. So give me your eyes. Your sidewalk spacers should do the same. They should get smaller as they go farther away. Okay, smaller as they go farther away. I'm going to ask you to use the bottom of your ruler. This seems weird, okay? Just look up here and trust me. You're going to learn later in one point perspective that, one, you never need to make up your own angles. Two, all vertical lines are straight. And then depending on... Depending on the side of the building, your horizontal lines might go to a point. We want the, it wouldn't make any sense for the lines on our sidewalk to go to the point though, right? So that means that they need to be straight lines, okay? So watch how I'm going to do this. I'm going to use the bottom of my ruler and I'm going to make two sidewalk lines. Now, how do I know if that line is straight? Because I am not using my ruler to like, going up an inch, 
you know, how, so how do I know if that's true? Is there any context clues around you that you could, like, just judge to see if something is straight? Crickets. Lines in the road. Okay. You can look at the lines in the road and the lines in your ruler. You could also probably a little bit more exact is look up here. Everybody free your pencil. Look at the lines on the ruler with the lines of the paper. If they are parallel or in the same line, probably your ruler is straight. And if you can do that on both sides, you probably are making a pretty straight line. All right, I want everybody to put their pencil down and look up here. You're not allowed to draw. You're not allowed to write anything. Okay, so my sidewalk and lines need to go farther, need to get smaller as they go farther away. So why use the bottom side of my ruler? Why would I do that? So I can see the depth of the last sidewalk that I made. Now we are looking down like a couple blocks space type of thing. It's not like we're looking like 10 miles down the road. So the change in size is going to be very gradual. You have to remember our lines are getting skinnier as they go farther back. So that's part of like an optical illusion. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to make a series of sidewalk lines. You are going to be making them gradually very small as you go farther away. They're probably not going to be perfectly spaced, but they're going to be close. But you're going to use your context clues of, hey, what does my ruler look like compared to the edge of the paper? And you just got to keep going and keep going until you fill that entire space with sight. Yeah, you can find it can be a problem if you make them too small, too fast. Why would you go on my You don't have to erase them all.
are going to make some milk. Okay? So if you're not done with your sidewalk, go back to it later. Now you don't have any sidewalk. All right. So a couple of rules before we start building. One, we said all vertical lines, vertical lines are lines that go up and down, are always going to be straight, no matter what. Okay? You're going to have a side of your building that is got straight lines and a side of your building that has angled lines. Okay? Look at my example right here. Okay? If we look at this first picture, if I have a right side and a left side of this building, the one that says 103, which side has straight horizontal lines? Right side or left side? Straight horizontal lines. Which one side? The right, the right side. Okay. You just going to wake up a little bit. All right. The right side has straight horizontal lines. It is the side that's farthest from the point. My left side has angled lines. These go with the point. It's closest to the point. On the other side of the road, things flip flop. My left side has straight horizontal lines because it's farther away from the point, while my right side has angled points because it's near the point. Make sense? Those are your rules, okay? That is the rule. So we're going to start just like down in this area, okay, near your bottom. I want you, we're going to start a building. And anytime we start a building, we start like the corner of the building, okay? Meaning where the building goes from the straight to its left side. So it doesn't matter really where you start it, and it doesn't matter where you end it, as long as you get above your vanishing point. So I'm going to do just a straight vertical line. I want it to be taller than the vanishing point right now. Just a little taller is fine. What's that? Somewhere near like the bottom there. We're going to layer a few buildings into this side. Okay. We are going to start by making the right side to the building, and then we will make the left side. I'm going to call this building number one, by the way. We're going to put in a few buildings, and then you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so we said if it is farthest away from the point, right now my right side is farther away from the point than my left side, we have to have straight horizontal lines. Because this looks like a really skinny space, I'm going to act like my building is going off the paper, okay? So I just brought that line all the way to the edge of my paper. And if I do that at the top, do I have to do it at the bottom? The answer is yep. I have to do it at the bottom. Okay. So it looks like I just have a rectangle. Pretty easy to do. Okay. So I'm going to go to the top of this building. Okay, this top corner, look right here. I'm going to put my ruler, I'm going to line it up with the corner of the building and then my vanishing point. And I am going to put in the depth of this building. So notice I did not make a line that went all the way to my vanishing point. I stopped at where I want the building to stop. Okay, but this goes to the vanishing point. All right, we need to make a vertical line going down. I'm going to look at my ruler where my ruler is hitting the paper because as I walk around with my first class, I notice I have a lot of crooked buildings. Okay, so we're going to look at our ruler where it's hitting the paper. I'm going to bring that line all the way down to the sidewalk. Do we need to make another line at the bottom of the building? No. Okay, why? Why, McKenna? Why do we not need to make another line at the bottom of the building? Um, because it goes to the sidewalk. Because it goes to our sidewalk. We already have a line there. We don't need to do this again. Okay? What can we do on these buildings? Put things on it. Like, that would make it look like a building instead of just a box. We'll do that later. Okay? I'm going to erase my left and right side because I don't need that anymore. But we are going to make another building, and we're going to make it look like like they stagger a little bit, okay? So what I could do is if you're trying to draw this like it's downtown Seattle. Downtown. These, the buildings downtown line, Disney. where one building ends, the other begins, like right in the same like line, right? So if I wanted to make one that looked like it's taller, I would go up 
and they go to the vanishing point and come down. But I'm going to make these look like they stagger. You can do either or later, but somewhere on this left side of building number one, I want you to make another vertical line up. I'm just going to go a little bit above it. I'm not going to make it look like it's humongous compared to the first building or anything. Well, I'm making mine tall. You can make it tall. Put it somewhere in the middle of these. Okay. Just so that you can let this next go. Okay. Our right side. You can choose to let this building go off the page again. I'm actually going to let it stop. I'm going to let this building stop and then bring another line down. Okay, this is like my right side of my building. If you're just closer to your edge of your paper, feel free to let it go off or whatever. All right, we got to create our left side. I'm going to connect the top corner to my vanishing point. Put in the length of my building. Okay, and then how do we finish this off? What do we got to do still? Do a vertical line down. All right. Did something look wrong here? The answer is yes, there's something wrong, but what is it? Huh? like going backwards. Like the one, the corner line that we drew, we meant for it to look like it's staggered. Yes. This line, though, looks like it hits the sidewalk just like this one does. Is this physically possible unless building number two, it is possible building number two is crashing into building number one, but we're not having crashing buildings in our city. Okay, let me explain how to fix this. This is one of the more confusing things we are going to cover. So I'm going to tell you that there's zero talking, there's zero ruler waving, there's zero pencils right now. Okay. I'm going to act like building number one is a glass building, okay? We can see where the base of this would be, okay? See that? Mm -hmm. I can see that. I can see through this building, which means my building number two at the earliest could start here, right? Because they don't like overlap. They're two separate buildings. So what can I do with this point? That's my point where I can go to the vanishing point. Okay, that's where I learned how to make the angle for my second building. Right now, what does building number two look like it's doing? Floating. Yeah, it's floating. In reality, it's really not. But right now, it looks floating because it doesn't come down to the sidewalk. I'm going to teach you how to fix that. But first, I want you to successfully end building number two. So you got to think about where building number one went in. And then that's where building number two could begin. So you're fine. It was almost like you had literally like a walking space on your It's totally fine. Okay, if a building is right on the sidewalk, like think of the buckle. The sidewalk's right to the building, you would walk on the sidewalk to the building. Let's say the building is <coughs> off of the sidewalk, like can you think of a building off the top of your head? Kemper. The sidewalk's down there and then there's a grassy area. So what leads to the building? Is the expectation that you will walk through grass to get to buildings? No, there's probably some sort of pathway, some sort of um, sidewalk that leads to it. Now, 
more than likely if yours is like mine or you have even less space, you're not really seeing a lot of the building. Okay, but what we would do is remember we have two options. Straight horizontal lines or horizontal lines that go to the vanishing point. So if we're going to create a path that comes off the sidewalk, what would be the best option? Huh? A straight horizontal line from the sidewalk. Okay, so I'm going to line this up. It does not matter if it hits a sidewalk line that you have pre-existing right now. And then I'm going to put my other one right here. It's probably not centered with what is the building. You would want to try to make it centered maybe later. But this is a way that it makes the building look less like it's floating. Okay, but they do have to be straight horizontal lines that go there. That's why we want to make sure we use our ruler. Okay. Um, common things that would be around this is sometimes maybe a business would have like a potted plant, right? Or some sort of like bush or something. What else would be right at the end of a pathway to a building? What would be there? A mailbox. A door or a mailbox. Let's go with the door right now. Mailboxes we'll cover later. I like it. Okay. Um, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat and have you switch gears just because I don't see, a lot of you don't see like where the door would be on your, how many of you don't see where the door would be on your second building because there's such a limited amount of space? Like I don't see where my whole door would be. So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go to building number one. We're going to put a door on this bad boy. Okay. So I'm going to start with two straight vertical lines. Here's my first one. And I'm going to decide the depth of my door. The first one does not look straight. Okay. Here I have the left and the right side for my door. Two vertical lines for my door. I'm doing this on my first building, building number one. On the angle side, though. All right. And if we are going to, here's the rule. Anything that's on an angled side, any detail on an angled side is angled. It's not like you can be like, I know this is the angled side of my building, but I'm going to use straight horizontal lines. Like, that does, that's not the way this works. Okay? How do I finish the top of my door? Put, use the vanishing point and connect the top. More than likely, you made one line that was a little too tall, in which case you erase it. Okay, but something like that is how we create a door. So two vertical lines. This line is angled and it meets the vanishing point. Okay? You would put in a doorknob or something like that. Let's put a really orange doorknob on there for now. A lot of doors have some sort of window on them. That's something you could do. You could do double doors. Like how would you like an entire glass room? Yep. Yep. Okay. Now, people get really confused with this. We are going to really quickly make two windows on the same building. They're just going to be like long windows. Okay. This is what I'm going to tell you to do. We're going to make like long rectangular windows. So I'm going to start at the top here. I'm going to put a line like that and then a line like this. Trying to make them about the same height. Something like those two. Okay. Because all vertical lines are always perfectly straight up and down. I'm going to start at my top window. I am going to create the angle that goes over. How do I do that? With the vanishing point. Okay. I'm going to bring this the whole way across the building. I'm just going to leave a little gap at the very end just to put like a, the other side of the window, like the straight side down. I do that same thing at the bottom of the window. This is where you can see, I'm going to do this for both my windows. When you, depending on your angle to your vanishing point, depends on the angle that the ruler is going to make. Okay? It looks weird now, but it does not when everything has the same look. And then you would finish it with two vertical lines.
we will talk about how to put in more signs, more do more sorry, wow, maybe I should talk. We can, we're gonna talk about how to put in more buildings, signs, more doors, more styles of windows, we're gonna do balconies, all those things in the next coming days. So make sure your name gets put on this. We will work on this tomorrow. Again, every day I'm gonna email the link out to the, the YouTube video for this.